Thanks, Jenny. It's good to be here. I am indeed Eleanor Jones, Director of Strategic Marketing at Business Management Daily. I also have the distinction of working for Adam Goldstein, who's this year's uh, conference chair. I think that's my claim to fame. I'm not really sure if I have one. Um, but we are talking about subscription renewals, a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Um, as technology changes, as we have more and more competition, I think that it's kind of easy to spend a lot of time away from basics. And renewals are the heart of any subscription-based company. So um, I think it's important to talk about them and revisit them from time to time. And as it said in the program description, you can put all of your eggs into one shiny new basket, but at the end of the day, renewal revenue is gold. I'm very proud of this clip art, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, learn how to manage subscription renewals to keep renewal rates high and subscription customers satisfied. And of course, a big part of renewals is in fact keeping your customers satisfied and actually delivering what you're promising. Um, I'm used to presenting with a couple more people. My slide might run a little bit short, so I'm going to talk really slowly. So it's good to see you all. Okay. Um, my take on renewals is that with all the new, more exciting channels out there, that traditional renewal channels are getting the short shrift. Um, even though direct marketing is our largest spend every year and generates the most revenue. Um, so we're talking about traditional and online marketing today. And I'm going to emphasize a lot on what we do and have done traditionally that we're moving forward uh, into the coming years. And of course, the ultimate goal to maximize our ROI and bring revenue in. Uh, Business Management Daily is a small company that acts like a big company. We are have a small staff, but we market to uh, all over the world. We have niches that include HR, leadership, administrative, and office tech. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about what I manage, I have 18 newsletters a variety of subscription websites and renewable CD products, which is something we started doing a few years ago. Um, we do have more than 300 ancillary products in our store, which we, of course, try to sell to our renewal people. And um, we have a number of free reports uh, that we use as lead gen. So just to give you an idea of where we're coming from. Okay. Some of the things that we do. Um, we have separate conversion and subsequent renewal series that we put in the mail for our print newsletters. I don't know if any of you are beginners, but conversions are the way that we treat first year subscribers. Subsequents are the people who subscribe for more than one year. And we do treat them a bit differently. We also have a very robust program for advanced renewals. Um, we do that quite a bit, and we're actually increasing our efforts in that regard because of our success there. Standalone renewals are renewals that we do not insert inside newsletters. We simply mail them out on our own. And ours all happen to be very straightforward, very simple bill me offers. No other way to order, just mail it back and we'll bill you. And then, of course, we have implemented online renewal series for both print and online newsletters. We have e advanced renewals and e expire notices that go out now on a regular basis. We renew for all of our CD and paper products. And we also have had a great deal of success with renewable subscription websites. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is our standard series that we mail every month to our first year subscribers. Now, I've heard a variety of people speak at SIPA so far. I was here yesterday for the early sessions. Um, one of my largest competitors does not start mailing conversion series until five months out. Um, we actually have had better luck starting with renewal at birth. We mail within the first month, but they renew. And our strongest efforts are efforts to employ, believe it or not. Um, we mail both 11 months worth of conversion series and 11 months worth of subsequent series. It is a lot of mail. We do get the occasional phone call to customer service that are unhappy with it, but it works and it makes money, so we continue to do it. And my mother, who calls Reader's Digest about this every three weeks, would just really be curious about that. Um, we actually can suppress them for future renewals. And thank you for uh, mentioning that. We can suppress them. We can't actually suppress them from our advanced renewals that go in with the newsletters. 
our sister company can, they can create separate channels, but we have such a small subscription base that we simply cannot go through the logistics of pulling them out, but we can suppress them after a fashion. And that's a really good point. Thank you. Um, so our first effort for both the conversions and the subsequents, we do give them a one-time shot to renew at the direct mail price they entered at. We get almost all of our acquisitions uh, through direct mail at a pretty steep discount. So if they do renew on the first effort, they get not only a special gift, but also the lower price. And we have found over time that people respond very well when we give them a choice of one, two, or three year offers and offer additional premiums with each year. I know that that's probably very basic for some of you, uh, but we tried to test out of that, and we tested right back into it. So on our first effort, we do put a lot of bells and whistles. Um, we have also, across the board, raised our prices by 20 to $25 average on efforts after effort one. Um, that has not seemed to hurt us any. I don't know if people are not paying attention or just um, probably they just love our products so much they want to pay the extra price. Yes. Um, depending on the publication, um, most of our print newsletters are eight page monthlies and we offer an initial price of $97. Um, which they get offered in the first effort, and afterwards we're raising it as high as $147. With subsequent, we're actually getting up into the $179 level. So we're really pushing the envelope, but we're still doing very well with this. Um, our more savvy customers understand they're eventually going to get an advanced renewal offer with a much lower price, and I'm sure some of them wait. Um, let's see, and I did mention, I think, subsequent are higher than conversions. Um, once they're buying for two years in a row, we did bump the, convert, the subsequent price um, by $20. I actually argued against this. Um, Adam is the one who wanted to raise the prices. Um, I lost the argument and he won the battle. So perhaps that's as it should be. Um, I, mean, I think I also mentioned that multiple year offers help very much on effort one. We do have a number of people that pick the two and three year offers, probably to get the free gifts. Um, yes, he wanted to know the size of the portion that takes the multi-year. Um, I would say 50%, this is just a blind guess, I have to go look it up and I'll try to drop you an email if you want to let me know, but um, people that take the one-year offer, which doesn't come through a premium, um, I would call that maybe 40%. Maybe another 40% take the two-year offer, which comes with a free gift, and then there's that magical 20% that want the two gifts and go for the top tier. Um, but, you know, effort one, even though the prices are lower and the gifts are higher, are not, is not actually our strongest effort. It's a good effort, it's just not our best. Um, I'm going to have a whole talk on the premiums later, but what we offer is what we're finding this year, and I'll go ahead and say that because this is recent news and I don't think it's in the presentation. People are responding very, very strongly to things that are globally attractive, such as how to do it sell how to downplay negative people in your office. Uh, one of my best selling CDs right now is negativity in the workplace. Apparently that's a big problem right now. I don't know if that's a social media thing or if we're all just surly, but um, does there some, you can do a lot of evergreen premiums. And then um, we have a lot of employment law customers and I have a number of things that, um, that we can offer specifically tailored. Um, so I mix and match the evergreen and the actual specific. The nice thing about evergreen is that anybody can make one um, one of those without a whole lot of uh, content specialists who don't have the resources to create a lot of premiums. Um, those are always good. Did that help? Okay. So um, another thing that we tried testing this year is stripping out everything from our renewal efforts and just stripping them down to bigger invoice uh, looking packages and that worked really well for a while. I think we mix and match a lot. We're get actually getting back into the bells and whistles special buck slips, um, colored envelopes. These are all the basics that I learned in direct mail about one million dinosaur years ago. Um, and they do still hold true. Um, don't forget about your copy. The copy needs to be all about benefits. And of course, stress me, special pricing or free giveaways. Um, again, we are finding that the more we stuff into the envelopes, um, the, more, the better we're doing. That'll probably work for about a year mm -hmm. and then we'll go back down to bare bones and come back. About once a year, it's good to change things up, at least in our industry. 
Um, I did mention different quality of fire envelopes can boost response. Denise at Kiplinger told me, why aren't your envelopes all yellow? So I just made them all yellow. Um, kind of an easy sell. And um, I know a lot of people forget about this, but in the world of, of online marketing, put a phone number everywhere, especially if it's an 800 number. If it's not an 800 number or an 888 number, put the words toll free in front of it. Um, that actually gives response. And it still works in this day and age. Now granted, I don't have the young customer base. Maybe that's not true as much anymore. Maybe you should be plastering your website all over. But I put my phone numbers on every single piece. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, my boss reminded me before I came in here that we took everything out and results were good for about a year and all of a sudden they started slipping again. So we started adding things back in and now results are going back up. Um, I think what works best for us is to do it one way for a year or two and then flip it back to the other way. And I think that probably just gives people something different to look at. Um, so I hope that there's that up. I think so. It is for us. Um, so I've been in this position at Business Management Daily for about three years now. Uh, we've changed everything around once, and we're just starting to change back into the music bells and whistles again. So the cycle has been going. Offering your special discounts in a variety of creative ways. Um, rebate checks all kinds of different crazy stuff that you used to see in Publisher's Clearinghouse. Um, if you remember all the, the days of the heyday when they were in the mail. People like to tear off something and tear off a check and send it back. We still get a significant number of renewals in the mail, even though we do offer online pricing um, and phone-in pricing. And people still fax to us, so we put our fax number on everything too. I would say 25 to 30% uh, percent depending on the effort of people still send their mail back to us, especially when it has a tear off in front of it. Um, little tip, we always put the two year offer. It's the easiest to tear off. I don't know if that makes any difference, but it makes me feel exceedingly clever. Um, this is one particular form that has done very well. We change it up for a tax season, we change it up for holidays. Um, so if you haven't tried a tear off renewal form or with a quote unquote fake renewal check, you might want to think about doing that. It's just a fancy way of offering them the same thing. Um, and we reiterate how much they're saving at about 15 different places on this one. Um, it does very well. Um, and on our advanced renewals, we do not offer folding options. Um, just give them a straight opportunity to pay us a uh, check and credit card. Um, this particular effort, which I can see is cut off at the bottom, I'm a graphics master. Um, also offers the tear off coupon, but I started trying it instead of a rebate check. I started sticking a free gift on it, and people love their free gifts. As you can see on the bottom, when we're offering both a book and a CD, we do a lot of webinars. We're very fortunate because our CDs are pretty much ready made from our webinars. Um, but if you have content specialists in your office, they could probably make a recording on a CD that's 45 minutes or an hour long. That would really Help people out of the appealing. Um, and if you're new at doing that, you know, try a different number of uh, titles on your CDs. Try changing up the names of your premiums. Um, again, I'm very fortunate because I am premium happy for our work. This particular form um, is something that we just tried for the first time about a year ago and has done very well for us. Um, you have to be careful with the full instructions. See the one, two, and three. Again, tear this off and send it back, and apparently people really like it. Okay, here's a very basic form, which I know I've seen a lot in the mail from different people. Um, the one salient fact that I found about this in the last two years of testing is that our simple statement of benefits forms do much better with a letter. Um, for us, it's worth to pay the extra printing cost to include the letter with it. Um, our letters basically start out saying, it would be nice if somebody could pay your mortgage for a year, but you know, we can't actually do that, but instead we can give you this great discount. That doesn't make any sense to me. I inherited this letter. It continues to do well. I'm happy with that. So um, I haven't fixed it because it's not broken. Uh, but again, I, I have found that, um, at least in the mail, 
not so much online, but the letter makes a huge difference. Um, statement of benefits over on the right, one, two, three, four, five. Include your discount. And of course, you know, the wonderful words at the top that you can't really see is your best deal. Your best deal is always your free deal offer. Um, this one actually doesn't offer free gifts, it just offers a good discount of price if it continues to be free deal offer. Okay, um, I had mentioned earlier that we send what we call standalone the news in the mail that are not inserted into our envelopes, but the newsletters. Um, these are extremely simple. We have found that our HR people and our administrative people really love a certificate who doesn't. And um, see how simple it is. Yes, please, please continue my subscription. And I'm sorry I didn't get the back of this one because it's simple bill me offer. They check yes, bill me later and they send it back. We do better off doing this a few times a year than almost any other renewal that we offer. So if you haven't tried a simple standalone form, if you have the kind of audience that might appreciate a certificate, this is a great way to go. Um, you get thousands back. I would say 85% of the people actually pay up, which I think is pretty good. Um, I'm trying not to overdo this. I'm slowly increasing the number of efforts and publications that I do this for. I've only tried it with uh, three publications so far, and I plan to do more this year, probably six. Um, so again, something to keep in mind. It's just so incredibly simple, it seems almost impossible. Uh, very cheap to do, and if people, if we actually personalize these, and if people have names that are spelled wrong, they will call in and ask to have a new one made, which we're happy to do when we send that to them. So people are putting these up on the board. Um, actually, we go ahead and bill them. We go ahead and let me get this right. We have a four-issue billing series, and if they don't pay by the end of the fourth bill, we send them a reminder and then we take away that deal. But they, they can actually get a few free issues if they're clever. I like to think that there are too many people to pay off. There are a few that don't pay off. Um, and some of them just simply miss the billing or don't understand the billing. But I think 85% is probably pretty good. But that's a great question. There is a way to get a few free issues. So it's very simple, just a tear off each one. 75 pound bubble for those of you who can't afford it. Um, ORS, Online Renewal Series. These look very 1970s. They're courier type on a white piece of paper and they're in an individual text in there. Um, I've started doing some HTML ones and they aren't doing as well as the plain black and white ones. Um, and actually, I had some trouble with this series when I first got it, um, the language was very strong. It said things like, we thought you liked getting your information. We thought you liked getting this. And um, we've had to tone that down because we got some hate mail. Um, so I revamped all of these about a year ago. They are extremely simple. Um, it is a series of seven. You don't send the first one out until six months before renewal. Um, and I'm sure when you see the slideshow, you can actually read through these. Some of them say last chance. I'm considering moving last chance to further down the pipeline because again, I've generated a couple of a couple of complaints recently. It's not actually the last chance because it's never the last one. Um, so, see, our most successful efforts in this seven-part series are the months that people are going to in their subscription and the month after, which really is their last chance, at least as far as the seven-month series go. Um, and again, we find very personal chatty approach without being overly harsh, a gentle marketing message. Hey, did you know your subscription is about to end? Wouldn't you like to see more about it? Hey. Yes, yes, we offer a ton of opportunities to renew. I know that that doesn't work for everyone. It works for us very well. We have all of our efforts make money. We're almost, we, we toy with the idea of cutting back. We haven't done it yet. We talk about it all the time. We need to do it. Um, where I'm actually in the process of renewing this seven-part four series, I might cut it down to five. There are a couple of efforts in the middle that are not doing as well. Uh, but the first one and the last two would be the best. So, great question. Today, you can click and renew now. At the very bottom, we always have a PS on a letter. Very, sound like right now, 101. But um, 
They always have a PS. We offer them the chance in the body of the letter and in the PS to click in an email. So I'll be adding phone numbers to these when I get back because I just talked about how great it is to have a phone number on everything. And of course, there's always a way to get to the store on our website buried somewhere in the course of this too. But um, if you're not doing this, uh, I'm not offering some sort of email notification or anything. It's good to try something. These are so simple. Um, the hardest part, I think, is remembering to actually get them automated in some way. Um, that's a really good question, and I actually have someone to help me with that. And to me, it looks like she pushes a button. But um, I know the IT department, and we have a small company. I say IT department instead of people. But um, we have very capable people um, to send these out every month and to track results for us. But it is automated. They don't Once we write it, they don't have to, have to remember to push send every month. Um, back to the statement of benefits form. I just can't talk about this enough. Um, this is just something that continues to work for us and many of our competitors, judging from what I see in the mail. Um, this is a scaled back version. Earlier I said that in the mail, our version with a letter works much better. We have found online that our scaled back version works much better. This is very clean and very simple. It has a name on it, it has a discount on what they're going to get, and then they will have opportunities throughout to click an order. Um, I don't see the opportunity to click an order here, which makes me suspect I did not, in fact, include page two with my apologies. But again, we have a PS on this. Even though it's a statement, we actually have a PS on it um, with a remove button. Um, now, we were sending these out every month. Again, a lot of mail. We've cut them back to every other month, and it has not seemed to hurt other um, overall results. Recently, I used to make these custom made every month or every other month, but we have again automated these um, to go with our planner searches. Now, once a person renews, they do get suppressed from all these multiple uploads, so we are taking steps to, to make sure that people are not continuing to get mail if they've renewed past a certain point. Um, a bit easier to do anyway for us. Um, and making them evergreen, we just simply took off all the holiday stuff other things that work really well and made them evergreen at the same time as being kind of a health club um, support staff a lot with them. I wrote down at the end best subject lines. Um, some of our best subject lines are we want to welcome you back, very tried and true. Um, statement enclosed is one of our best subject lines as well. When they order, they do see at the top that it is a renewal. It spells out very clearly when they order from what they're getting. I wanted to talk about something that's new for us. Uh, we acquired a company a few years ago called Alexander Hamilton Institute, AHI, uh, which had a lot of wonderful ancillary products. We had actually never tried to market a renewable CD product before. Um, basically, every six months, we make a brand new CD with updated content on it. And we mail out a bill. If a person would like to, we mail out a bill with the CD. And if the subscriber would like to get the next CD, they pay the bill. It's got a, about an 80 to 90 percent retention rate on these, which is very high. Um, a lot of the people we inherited from AHI, but we were building our own market from our own database. Um, I just included this because it's so unusual. Um, if we sell the initial product for around $100, and we renew anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars. So twice a year, people get a CD and a bill. And like I said, a lot of them renew just on a simple piece of paper. It looks like a bill, quacks like a bill, it's a bill. Um, so as I said, the renewal rate on these is pretty good for me. So it might be something that you guys want to try building into your product base. It's just been an unusual and pleasant product option for us. A big part of our business has become renewable subscription websites. Um, I know some of our competitors like PLR offer all kinds of things like this and are very successful at it. Um, 
this is our HR specialist website is something that we've had for about um, six years now. And what we found as far as renewals that the best way for us to renew is to offer, I know some of you don't have webinars, we have a really robust webinar program, but we do offer our subscription website with our webinars, it's particularly in DHR. And we have found that giving customers the ability to opt out at the ordering webinar stage does not actually behave us. We have a, about a 40 to 50 percent retention rate once we sort of force people in with their webinar purchase. Um, and since we sell this for $300 and up a year, that's been very good for us. We have found that all of our efforts to market our subscription websites do not work as well as opting people in through webinars. So if you have something like this, again, like a free gift offering to offer, say, a free month free trial, Uh -huh. Writing that in, we're getting their name and credit card information, and after 30 days, they are billed for the first time. Uh, yeah. Yes, and so the first, uh, about 50 to 60 percent of people opt out there, and I think it's there for a very long time. It's our annual subscription. They do get a free month free trial at webinars. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Yes, it's still more It's um. It's just the way that we renewed this is so simple. With the auto, this is the only renewal product that we offer where we auto renew. Um, our others are, are, are very much either better than or straightforward for us. Um, you know, that's a really good question. Um, we call everybody um, if, if something goes wrong, not so much. Um, not that I've heard of. No one's come to me about it. That's something I should know. Oops. But apparently not because no one's come pounding on my door. And we have a, a pretty good customer service department as far as if your credit card doesn't work, they will call you the same day. I guess that's a luxury. I wrote down that quarterly renewals are more successful than annuals. Um, quarterly renewals after the first month and then they renew every three months. I also said annual renewals was taken. Um, that probably cuts down on the number of credit cards. There we go. Good old fashioned seasonality. Yes. Yes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Um, he was asking about lifetime value of our quarterly renewals as opposed to the annual renewals on the subscription websites. That's a good question to which I don't have the answer, um, but I can get you an answer to that if you drop me an email. That's something that my boss uh, started doing before I started, and so it's uh, more his daily work, but he did tell me to include that piece of information. Our lifetime value information is a little sketchy right now. That's something that we're working to revamp. The, um, went through a lot of scrambling for acquisition and now we're finding that we need to do a bit more follow-up. So I hope that's okay to say that, powers that be. Um, sure. I'd like to know that too. He wanted to know if anyone in the room had a grip on lifetime value. We have so many offerings with so many different promo codes on them that sometimes it's hard to, we have multiple accounts for some I'll be accepting lessons after the seminar, <laughs> but it is something that we've tasked the IT department of two and three people to look at in the coming year. And so far, they've done a good job. We, are, of course, are finding that different publications have a better lifetime value. Our HR people buy more than our admin people and very simple things like that. So we're going to put extra efforts into selling things that are due to those people. But it's very rudimentary. So yeah, I'd love any information that people have on that. So you too, I feel better now. Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> I feel, okay, I feel relieved. Yeah. I think that the fine line there is just offering people too many things. And you can email them to, you know, until they're sick of you and drop out of your marketing efforts. So we're working on that as well. 
I'm getting off the topic. Who's famous for that? <laughs> no, it's a great question. Um, okay, taking a tired poem and adding seasonality to it. And it just, oh. and for some reason, I got a 50% higher response on this um, effort when I did it in uh, Halloween. It was July, pardon me. I had fireworks going on. So, of course, I brought it back for Christmas because I have a winter saving spectacular and don't you wish you did too. So, um, we have, uh, this is two times a year I offer an extremely steep discount. Just in the advanced renewal program, uh, most of the time, the other um, 10 months of the year, I offer a, a much higher price. So in this particular one, I gave them 33% off. Some of them get as much as 80% off, depending on the publication and the number of subscribers that I have. That might be something that you want to play with. Um, I just think that seasonality, and I just heard this in another lecture, is something that people tend to overlook, but it should be probably a few years of um, But this is just a... a Plain old poem that I added a buck slip to and I changed the colors around and it, it just breathed new life into it. So just because an effort is stale, don't give up on it. Um, just try a little bit something different with it. If that doesn't work, you might want to give up on it. Um, going back to bells and whistles, this is an extremely straightforward advanced renewal form. You don't send it out with a letter. It's a different form of advanced renewal subscription benefits form. It just simply says benefits. And it does have a bonus report in it. I would have to say this is the form that I use the most often. And that second part where it says free bonus report, people really respond to that. Um, they respond to things like time management, Excel, Microsoft Office, negativity in the office. Very evergreen across the board products. I tried tailor making the gifts to the specific publications on this particular form, and it did not do any better. So now it's a lot less effort to just simply pick one publication. Um, they are printed. We tried offering just online, and people didn't want that. The response fell tremendously. We still have a number of people that like hard printed products, including the gifts. Um, I am, again, in a fortunate position because a web store full of lists and books. But in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about how to do this on there. And talking still. Okay. But again, this is our, our most successful advanced renewal form. I think a lot of it has to do with its simplicity and the fact that we offer it every single day. And additional tips and tricks what's working in the mail? Um, again, these are taking things that might be tired for you and just changing them up a little bit. Um, I think it's hard to find the time to do that, especially with an ongoing renewal series, but I think it's well worth the effort. Um, I was reading an article this morning that reminded me that in order to test an ongoing renewal series, you really need to give what you're doing in about a year um, before, you, before you get results. Um, so think about changing things up before you do it, but it's definitely worthwhile to keep testing at least once a year or every two years. Um, Changing a plain old number 10 envelope to a 6 by 9 or a, or a big old number 14, that's really helped us to find. Um, mailing packages without a letter. That seems to be effective and ineffective depending on the effort. But we mix it up a lot, going back to what we said earlier. CD disc premiums, people still want CDs. Um, when we offer a choice of CDs versus downloadable files, people are still taking CDs about 60 to 40 percent. So we do offer, again, the hard copies of things in our efforts for renewals. We do offer a choice of printer electronic fulfillment now on many of our order forms, and we're finding that actually boosts response overall. Um, a lot of our customers are older. In our particular case, and they still want to print, but as younger people are starting to, to pick up on the fact that they don't actually have to have the paper. Um, I've also found that for fresh copy, some of the editors have become really good marketing writers, and they're happy to pitch in and write a marketing letter for me, as opposed to one of the copywriters that I have access to, or, or my boss who writes a lot of copy and he's just lucky. Um, our renewal lists are really important to us. Um, I actually took all of my renewal names for the past, say, 15 years and sent them to Abacus. And I let Abacus tell me which ones are actually still viable um, prospects. 
So after my renewals expire, after six months, I put them back into the direct mail cycle and I've been able to call the ones that are least likely to buy. So I don't have to mail the entire expert file for a year. I can only pick and choose what I'm mailing. Um, and advocates and many other people do this, have divided them into tiers of one, two, and three for me. Some publications I can drop down into two or three best possible experts. And some I just never mail at all anymore. Um, but that was something that really, really helped. So the renewal lists are golden, but there's also dead weight on them. So if you can find the time and, and effort and create a bit of money to have them called, that would be very, very helpful. And talk to vendors. I do that all the time. I'm happy to talk to them. I'm happy to give me suggestions about what's working for people. Um, I do have a current back. So maybe that's just an intuitive thing. Um, this is very basic, more on smart mail. A lot of tests, different size, a different color, a live stamp. Just don't forget to try different things, especially if you're, if you're tired. And SIPA, of course, is a great place to ask if anyone is working. You know that. Um, Combining your renewal effort in the mail with the same effort online, I showed you some of the HTML, HTML online things that we're trying now. That can lift response up to 30%. I haven't necessarily found that to be true with my own packages. It does help. Um, I had a I have a direct mail vendor that swears that's true. Um, I'd say the most I've seen is maybe 20%. But it's a good look. Um, take your strongest direct mail copy and, and turn that into the renewal form and vice versa. It's also very helpful. Um, if it worked on one set of people, your same set of people are renewing, so it might work again. Things like rebate checks, I love that. Um, I have a policy called no package left behind. I don't like to mail out anything without an opportunity to buy something else in it. Um, we've printed up evergreen box slips. Lately, we've tried mini catalogs and, of course, flyers. In our renewals, we also include advertisements for things in our store, and we've been fairly successful with that. Um, it's brought in several thousand dollars a month additional revenue. So, I think the key to everything is offering giveaways. Um, if you don't have books or CD products, um, I think what one of my folks at work has been doing is taking old articles from newsletters, putting them together, putting a cover on it, and calling it you know, the best of executive leadership, things like that. You can make your own premiums out of existing content and uh, design them fairly simply to look like books and call them a free report and give them away as premiums. I think that's a really cost-effective way that almost everybody can do without having to pay an outside editor um, or create new content. A lot of our publications are evergreen, so some are more easier than others. Um, but I think that's probably the most compelling thing I've found in many is that people still love a free book. And again, I mentioned this earlier that we have found that giving away print items or CD items significantly outperforms downloadable products. Now, I'm going to keep my eye on that in the coming years as things change. And is that it? Okay. Mm -hmm. We have, and if you'd like some, I have a drawer full of them. We have the binoculars. Um, the the tchotchke that I've tried in the last year was HR Specialist umbrellas, um, which is fine, but I ordered too many of them. Um, they actually did pretty well. Um, we have found that giving away books and things that we already have is so much less, so much more cost effective. It costs a couple of dollars to print a CD, two or three dollars to print a book. Um, especially with all the venues that we have now, our create space um, and digital printing. I'll probably try more tchotchkes in the future, but um, in recent years, accessible has really done particularly well for us. It depends on the tchotchke. I worked at a company called DNA, and I gave away a lot of um, mini notepads, those plastic cases that you could snap open that had pins and, uh, and colored sticky notes on them, and those actually did really well both as giveaways and premiums. So that's a great question. I might try more of that in the coming years. But yeah, definitely the umbrellas. Or is it umbrella? I never know. Yeah. Have you had luck with that? Yeah, it's been pretty good. So Jenny said that they had had good luck with those two or three years ago, and they're thinking of trying them again. And 
I think switching things up is always a great idea. So, um, yeah, I think I'll try one in a few years now. Um, as I was saying earlier, and I'll hurry it up here, I think it's a mistake if you don't switch up your conversion series fairly often with the bells and whistles letters versus the plain invoices that I talked about earlier. I think we're going to end up switching those out every year. Um, and those results taper off, and then give it a good review every six months. We've also talked about mailing less often. Um, as I said before, for us, mailing more often seems to work the best, and I've had other people that are here say the opposite. Um, does anybody have any comments about what's working particularly well for you right now? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of my vendors has something that they call snail mail. Um, they have a, and they are actually hitting at the same time. This is for prospecting that they're doing this. Um, it's a little bit tougher right now in the B2B market to get a hold of email mailings. At least that's what I'm finding. So to hit up the same people in acquisition that people are hitting up with email, I haven't found a cost-effective way to do that. So what I'm doing is hitting up my renewals at the same time, um, both in the mail and in print. And so we do, when I was trying this, we were actually timing the renewals online to hit at about the same time as the print mail. I would let the print hit first because the online to me seems like I'm, I'm almost intuitive that it's a reminder. I don't have anything to back that up. Just the voices in my head. Yes, hey, remember this is on your desk. And as a matter of fact, that's something to try and if I needed to. Did you get this? Wouldn't you like to renew me? So, yeah. But I'm going to try to do more of that. Getting our online renewals evergreen has necessarily involved that my print offer doesn't actually always match the exact online offer I get, and it might be a completely different thing. But each one seems to bring in its own chain of revenue, so I don't want to get either, either of them off the hook. Um, and just real quickly, PMD goes back into the mail. If renewals, we consider them truly expired after six months, um, and we put them right back into direct mail. They do fairly well. Um, and again, we work with applicants to pinpoint our best expire prospects and call the dead weight. Um, and I might have put more emphasis on phone calls that we make in between to make phone calls to our expires at the month before expires. Um, that's basically been a break even prospect for us because we probably figured out we would have lost anyway. So I want to let them try a month of expire and month after expire as well. Our renewable CV products, the ones that we renew every six months, we're also going to be trying that in coming years to get some of those people with uh, phone calls who can follow up. Um, but I think that telemarketing is, even in this day and age, is, is a big part of our success with renewal series. We are really late to drop off people that haven't responded to any of our early efforts. Um, and just very quickly, um, the renewal people have a lifetime value, so don't look them in the mouth. Of course, I'm proud of that graphic too. Um, with the gift horse in the mouth. Um, we try to get email, the basic gist of this, because I'm running long, is that we try to get email addresses for everyone. People don't always offer their email address to us on the order forms. Um, so we offer a variety of free reports to try to get our existing customers to give us their email address because we still have a very strong email component. We do call that the email collection program. We call it eCollab. Um, a little bit about it there. And that's a summation of our uh, using the other forms that require email addresses. If somebody calls in and wants to renew, we ask them for their email. Just you know, don't discount the possibility of, it, of upselling. And the final thought: waste no opportunity to renew. This is our last issue sticker. Very vibrant. Um, so this is a, and it has the phone number on it. I'm proud to say. Um, so just uh, never, never miss an opportunity. Anybody has any thoughts about what they're going to do?